Okay. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, my name is Mufida Haidar, um, the Senior Youth Collective Coordinator at Trust is Development, and I am also one of the 20 Youth Global Fellows for Gender Equality with NGO CSW. Um, I'm very privileged and honored to be here today with you all, and especially uh, for this partnership and for this uh, fun discussion. I'm so excited uh, for this event myself. Uh, I'm sure all of you are. Um, I have here with me uh, Nora Armani, the founding artistic director, socially relevant film festival in New York. And we're very excited for this partnership together between NGO CSW and you, Nora. So uh, great to have you here with us. And uh, during the uh, during the session, we will be screening uh, two uh, movies and we will have amazing discussions with the filmmakers. Uh, so we will be playing Lego Oma, directed by Karina Sturm, and Women on the Move, directed by Alice Lemkes. Um, Nora, I will hand it over to you to tell us uh, more about, to introduce yourself, the filmmakers, and tell us more about uh, the film festival itself. Thank you so much, Mufida. And I must say that uh, thank you for taking the time with all the time difference and everything and joining in. And we really, really appreciate this. We really appreciate our partnership with NGO CSW, which has been going on for some time now. And a, a year or something last year, we took a break because it was too many things happening last year. It was our 10th anniversary edition. So it was too many uh, events, too many films. We had 71 films on the 10th anniversary uh, occasion. And this year, I'm happy to say that we are back and we are able to present this event. Uh, this year, we are coming uh, to the um, uh, festival, which actually kicks in on March 13 in the, for the in-person section of the festival and goes until the 18th in New York City. And we have several different venues that we are uh, present at. The one at the Maisel Cinema uh, up in Harlem. And we're starting the festival there with a number of documentary films that are very much pertinent to what's going on in the world today. And then uh, we go to a Cinema Village on the 13th, 14th, and 15th. I'm sorry, excuse me, I got my dates mixed up, 14, 15th, 16th, and 17th of March, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, with a full program of narrative features and documentaries and a couple of shorts sprinkled in between with groups of shorts. And also in between these two, we have on the 14th, a program at... Um, MRHS, which is the Morningside Health and Retirement Services, where we already brought a Black History Month program last month, and now we're doing something with BIPOC films and filmmakers. And on the 18th, that's the last day of the festival in the in-person section, we have our award ceremony, which takes place at the National Arts Club. And it, on the 19th, a uh, majority of these films, with the exception of maybe two or three titles, uh, start running on our um, um, online, uh, on our platform, on our uh, online platform. So whoever is not able to come to New York or be in this session to see the two films, they can catch them later. So uh, after this introduction, uh, I started, the, the, this is our 11th annual edition of the festival. And we have screened so far 700 films from 40 different countries, all based on social issues. That is the specificity of this film festival. We try to refrain from gratuitous violence, special effects that are there just to become a wow factor, but don't necessarily say much about the human condition. And the strongest topics that we focus on are obviously women. Uh, we have a lot of films dealing with the women's uh, condition or situation. Then we have films on aging and disability this year. We have films on the LGBTQ community. We have films about always, we always have films about immigration, and refugees, and most importantly, 
on um, climate change and the environment. And this year we are calling them our planet because that's the only one we have and we need to be caring and mindful of what we do with our planet. So later on during the talk, I might fill you in a little bit more about the festival, but without further ado, I would like to, do you want me to introduce the filmmakers at this stage, Mufida, or how? Uh, maybe given that we're talking about the festival, if we can uh, elaborate oh, yes. a bit more sure, and then we- Yes. Okay. Yes, that <laughs> would be great. But I just need to say that, uh, what you said is inspiring because like always using art and these issues is always the for me the best way yeah. to proceed so <laughs> yes absolutely because when you start preaching people and telling them you got to do this this is important that is important people shut up shut out you know they don't want to hear they are um careful about what comes to them but uh, with through art and film, especially a strong medium such as cinema, because at any given moment today uh, in our world, we are always in front of a screen, right? We are right now, you know, uh, either it's on our phone or the computer or the television screen, or we're constantly in front of the visual element. So the power of cinema in passing a, a message along or changing people's lives or their uh, mentalities or their or their ability to understand each other and i think the basis of world peace in fact as big as that and um and uh, the elimination of any type of prejudice racism hatred uh, between ma uh, mankind is and womankind in this case is the basis of it all is the knowledge about the other the other's culture and understanding that there are many more similarities that link us together than there are differences so we should learn how to focus on these similarities and i we want like to believe that the power of cinema through the power of cinema we show people what these similarities are and how we are all linked together so maybe we can watch the trailer and that way instead of words we'll get the images That was really nice, a nice summation. I must say that this uh, trailer was made before the selection of the shorts. Uh, so you don't see any clips from the short films in it, unfortunately, uh, only the feature films. But I just put the festival uh, website in the chat. And if you go on the website, you can find a lot of information about all the films that are on offer. You find information about when the online section starts and also how to get tickets, how to 
enjoy the films. Thank you so much, Nora. Like even from watching the trailer um, and the and the like, how the image speaks to itself, and you can feel the messages and the energy, and even the music itself uh, draws a lot of excitement to explore these movies more. So thank you so much for sharing. Uh, maybe if you can uh, introduce the films and um, and also the filmmakers, so we can start the screening and then we can go into uh, a discussion. Thank you so yes, much. Thank you so much. Well, first, let me, before I uh, start with the uh, individual filmmakers, say that how we go about choosing the films and why I made this film festival is because I was becoming a little tired of seeing a lot of violence on screen, which has no meaning, in fact. And I felt, OK, if I don't want to see violent films, I don't go to the cinema to see violent films. But sometimes you are bombarded with violent images where posters have guns and knives and violence and people running away and, um, you know, uh, fear and so on and so forth. And I'm like, are, don't we have enough of that in the world so that we are feeding ourselves and our um, visual area? Like I'm standing there innocently at the bus stop and then suddenly I'm invaded with these visuals. So that was one reason. The other was a personal tragedy that happened to me with the uh, with a hate crime against women, obviously, in the first place with my cousin and her father, my uncle, uh, suffering uh, and, you know, losing their lives in this hate crime. And I wanted to do something to commemorate them and um, in a meaningful way. So the two together, plus my sociology background, in addition to being an actor and so on, and this festival was born 11 years ago. So I am very happy about the way it has turned. And despite the two years of COVID of us going online only, we have been able to survive and here we are. And I am so grateful to be able to share uh, these wonderful stories with a lot of people from all over the world. And I'm sure not only women are tuning in today, but a lot of uh, men as well, everybody, all sorts of people, men, women, everyone. So uh, to start with, we brought to you two choices of films today uh, made by women and about women. That's how we wanted to uh, present uh, the NGO CSW forum event, to the forum event. So the first one is a um, documentary film called Lego, Lego Oma, which means grandmother in German. It's a film from Germany by Karina Sturm. And Karina is a 36 year old disabled multimedia journalist and previous research associate living with Ehlers-Danlos syndrome and many other comorbid conditions. She graduated with an MA with distinction in international journalism from Edinburgh Napier University in Scotland and works for German and US publications focusing on the accurate representation of people with chronic illnesses and disabilities in media. Besides her work as a journalist, she is also an author currently writing a German guidebook about how to not be ableist. And with her blog and podcast, she educates people about invisible disabilities and chronic illnesses to further reduce common stereotypes. Karina has been active in the EDS and larger disability communities for more than a decade and is interviewed and worked with many disability activists across the globe. Through producing multimedia content for magazines such as Ability Magazine and filming her feature-length documentary, We Are Visible, which highlights the lives of people with EDS in six different countries, Karina has gained significant experience she brings into further documentary film projects. And Lego Oma, tells the story of this grandmother who finds that in the place she lives in, she becomes disabled due to an accident and chair bound. And then she finds that in this area where she lives in, a lot of shops don't have the ramp, the disability ramp. 
So she starts making disability ramps using Lego. So it's an amazing story. And I don't want to tell you more because you have to watch it. And I will introduce both films and then we can watch both and then invite the filmmakers so we can have a discussion. The second film we're going to see is called Women on the Move, and it's directed by Alice Lemkes, which uh, this is a UK film um, from the United Kingdom. And Alice is one third of the adventuring element of not-for-profit organization, the Adventure Syndicate, who aims to inspire, encourage, and enable others, particularly women and girls, to adventure on their own terms. The Adventures Syndicate, TAS, make films, write articles, organize gatherings and events in order to achieve this aim. While not steering TAS, Alice is uh, writing a PhD on social policy and homelessness. She lives in the Highlands of Scotland. Wow, there is a common thread between the two filmmakers, and that is Scotland. Alice's film is very interesting because it tells, it's also a documentary about the way um, women have uh, evolved, the, the, the way they were dressed in the last cent past centuries, and very constraining clothes that couldn't con constricted their movements and how they were able to creatively liberate themselves by making adjustments in those clothes. It's a very amusing film and with a nice angle about this fashion statement. So there you go, after the introduction of the two films, let's watch them and see for ourselves. Well, wow. <laughs> yeah, I just don't know where to start from. My heart is full, my mind is full, and really I'm honored to be here. And thank you so much, Alison, Karina, and Rita. Um, I don't know where to begin, but like documenting all of these stories and uh, actually speak to our heart and our mind and our whole uh, as a body and, and soul. Uh, so these stories of change, uh, sharing the the power of women, and I can say maybe, uh, if I may compare in a way, but like both are breaking the barriers, shifting the narrative, uh, the strength that I can see that uh, uh, no one is waiting for an excuse, if I may say, to do anything or an approval from anyone, yeah. you know, uh, so it's it's really empowering um uh yeah there's a lot to be said i don't know where to start from but i'm really looking forward to start the discussion because i have a lot of questions popping into my mind and just like to tell everyone here we will give some point to q a because i'm sure others as well um uh, others as well might have questions as i do I so can, if i may just introduce yes please <laughs> The one common thing I saw in these two films, and that's why I wanted to present them uh, on this program, is um, taking matters into our own hands. Exactly. That's um, what um, Rita does, and that's what the women in uh, Women on the Move do, and that's what NGO CSW does, and that's what we should all be doing. We should take matters into our own hands. Nobody's going to bring us anything on a silver tray or platter or whatever. So um, this said, I want us to get into the discussion. We have Karina. Do we have, I, I think I admitted Alice. Is she around? We should have her on the panel. Uh, how does how do I make Alice a panelist? Uh, we I can only um, once Alice's camera is on, we can add her to the panel. But she is here. <laughs> yeah, I guess she needs to start. Yeah, her I video. think I think Alice uh, wrote in the chat, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. 
Yeah. Um, uh, Dr. Kat, would you mind turning? Uh, Annabelle, the camera is needed, you mentioned. So, okay. Yeah, in order for them to be in the, as a panelist, you need to have the camera yes. on. Thank you, Alice. But we will also direct questions to you in the in the chat or even like feel free to type in. And uh, Dr. Kat, welcome. Thank you for joining us. And uh, thank you, Karina, for joining us. Maybe uh, to start with, uh, if you can tell us um, like why, just to start from the inspiration, like why have you made these films? What inspired you to do these uh, movies focused on uh, uh, on women's rights and on the, it speaks a lot to 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 personal lives and many things taken and for granted, if I may say. Uh, so maybe if you can tell us what inspired you and why you have done these movies. Terrific. If I can jump in and you can hear me. Um, thank you very much for this honour. I speak on behalf of the team of Women on the Move and we consider this to be an absolute honour and we feel very privileged to be part of this, so thank you. Um, so I'm a Professor of Sociology at the University of London. Um, this film is based on five years of research my team of sewing social scientists and I have been doing into the incredibly inspiring histories of uh, women and girls um, sporting lives. You know, there's so many stories that haven't been told about them, and we tell one version of this through the unusual lens of innovative sportswear. Because um, we found, of course, that women and girls have always been sporty throughout time, of course, but they've always had things that have, have inhibited them, social, cultural, political barriers, but they've always worked around them. You know, they've taken matters into their own hands, as you said, Nora. And we found one way of they did this is by... Um, Lots of them found, you know, used all their um, friends or husbands or brothers' sportswear, did sports without having the appropriate clothes or invented it themselves. And so in all of our research, we just unearthed hundreds of examples of inventive sportswear that just happened to be extraordinary, you know, convertible, reversible and invisible unless you went looking for it. We couldn't find stories about these. So my team and I reconstructed a whole lot of them and we thought what better group of amazing women to test them out in the Scottish Hills than to team up with a very inspiring adventure syndicate and also Anila McKenna from more diversity in Scotland as well. Um, and um, they really put these costumes to their paces um, and Alice then, you know, directed this incredible film. But we really think, you know, the film um, shows the humour, the endurance, the courage and the creativity of our inventive foremothers. And they show just some of the extraordinary ways that women and girls have creatively, but also persistently worked around all these kind of barriers that have inhibited them, you know, through, for many, you know, for, for decades, centuries, to do what it is that they've loved. And in the process, we think forge paths for future generations. I don't think my answer is that good, but I'm not <laughs> try to keep up. Um, I haven't really prepared anything for this meeting because I wanted to just like kind of speak from the heart. Um, well, I made this film because I love Rita. Um, we've met years ago uh, when I interviewed her, which was like the first intro sequence you saw in the in the film. Um, and I just, I don't know, I immediately, immediately fell in love with her and I, I wanted to um, make a film about her. And it was like a really spontaneous small uh, very very uh, zero budget project uh, was just like one camera and just Rita and I and of course her daughter um, and yeah we had a lot of fun we filmed this in two days um, with the intention to show it was not so much about taking matters into her own hands as you just said um, because it shouldn't be the responsibility of Rita to build wheelchair ramps and to make anything accessible. It's, it's usually the government's responsibility. But what Rita does is she creates these little pieces of art and then people start talking about accessibility and those people wouldn't have thought or discussed this matter. And because Rita is this like fun and, and, and just like the nicest, kindest person, people like talking to her. And then they actually realize, oh, there is an issue with accessibility. And that's basically the message we want to send. We have Rita with us. Is there a way of bringing her on camera? I mean, she's on camera. 
She is, yeah, but I meant like, yeah, there she is. There she is. <laughs> Yeah, uh, Rita does not speak English, but I can translate if you want. <laughs> um, what do you want from Rita? What do you want to know? No, it's just interesting to see her. I mean, we already oh, saw okay. her in the film, but in, in the real person. Rita, they just wanted to see you. <laughs> just to say hello. <laughs> oh, it, yeah, I should have translated that to German, right? Uh, Rita, die wollten dich einfach nur mal sehen und hallo sagen. Und jeder findet dich toll. Du bist, glaube ich, noch auf Stumm. She's on mute, though. We can't hear her. Ja, Rita, du bist noch stumm geschalten. There is a question. I don't know. Jetzt. Jetzt. Yes. yes, hello. Hi. <laughs> Sorry, I don't speak English. <laughs> well, Aber I enjoyed ich, the uh, film very much and enjoyed seeing you in your real environment and everything. So thank you. Thank you for being here with us. And uh, we're, we're honored to be with you and to watch the movie. So thank you for being here. Danke, dass du da bist und äh, sie fühlen sich geehrt, den Film heute zu gesehen zu haben. Ja, ich fühle mich geehrt, dass der Film von uns gezeigt wurde. Ja? <lacht> And Rita feels very honored that you showed our film today. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you so much. Um, uh, well, actually, Karina, just to comment on what you said, uh, you're absolutely right. It is the responsibility of the government when it uh, comes to matters um, of taking things in our own hands uh, but if we may say that it's uh, it's a first the political statement that also is mm. being used, like the art that is being used also there's a political statement behind it it's raising awareness there are many layers uh, that are being done uh, throughout this this project and um, uh, yeah so this is what I wanted to to say in this regard also mm -hmm. and like never letting anyone stop you Rita like if she wants to do an activity she would do it she, she would never wait for anyone's approval which is um which is a lesson learned to be honest uh so yeah thank you um maybe Kat um, um I want to go uh, back to you Dr. Kat on the matter of the research actually because it came up a lot in the in the movie as well that uh that stories are not being told unless you dig deeper into them and the history how the history affects us at the same point at the same time I mean because like uh, as uh, as it was mentioned in the movie that uh, given that these stories weren't documented if affecting women of now um, and also like um, uh, you have to dig deeper to know more about these stories and many things like even for us we take it for granted what we wear today but uh, it's good that it reminds us that we should not forget the efforts of our foremothers and what they have done throughout the history so that we are in this place definitely it's unfortunate in many parts of the world it's still an issue and we are fighting in different ways but can you tell us more about the research itself like how was it done and the challenges behind it maybe because it's very interesting how this research has uh, has become an art work that can speak to everyone like you don't have to go to have access to a library to read it and this is i think how the world is shifting so mm -hmm. if you can tell us more about maybe because i'm sure there's a lot of work behind it in terms of research uh, can you dig deeper into uh, in this point yeah, thank you very much for that question and comment. Um, I did put a link to the larger research website into um, the, uh, the the chat um, because yes, it is. It's been going for five years. It's funded by European Research Council grants. It's called Politics of Patents. Uh, or POP for short, so politicsofpatents.org um, is the project. But basically, we've just had this remarkable opportunity to go looking for um, 
treasure in the archives because there's um very um there's very little that's been written about uh women in history as probably lots of people know you we hear a lot more about um men throughout time and these remarkable kind of triumphant and heroic stories very little about kind of like all the other stories that actually are just as important and just as essential and just as interesting but just have come in different forms or might be considered kind of more kind of essential and clothing is kind of essential and we tend to ignore it unless we don't we don't have access to it or it fails on us or or something like that and so I think these stories kind of remind us about how incredible clothing is how um remarkably privileged we are if we have the clothing we want because we certainly do not have you know everyone does not have this all around the world and some of these issues that we we're talking about historically are still getting you know um reproduced and people kind of suffer those experiences all the time and certainly um in in the uk and in scotland recent you know um reports have come out saying that girls are still becoming you know feeling not very sporty you know now you know in their teens because one of the reasons has been about body image and appropriate clothing or how they might feel judged and um and otherwise pressured so you know these issues even though they're historic and certainly aren't as prevalent to many people's lives they still exist and they have these impacts that have larger health social and political problems so that's why I'm interested in these as a sociologist um, I got taught sewing by my mum like many people and I think sewing is a superpower frankly because we all wear clothes and we should be mending more of them rather than throwing them away um, and I just got this opportunity to talk about some of my favorite things with some of my favorite people and just working with the Adventure Syndicate with Alice, the director, with uh, Anila from More Diversity was an absolute joy and delight. And to make this film that goes out to, as you said, so many more people has been a fantastic opportunity to have these kind of conversations. So we welcome anyone who wants to get in touch or invite us to come and speak or do other things. And we're making all these sewing patterns available for people to remake their own kind of costumes, versions of this, should they want to. Versions of the costumes. That's very interesting, if I may interject. Um, I wanted to know which college from the University of London where, where where are you based? Goldsmiths. It's a Goldsmiths. quite a well known arts based college. No, it's even a very well known to me because oh. I'm an MSc in sociology from the London School of Economics. No way. That's very local. Wow. Yes, wow. because well, that's why I keep saying that uh, doing this festival is kind of puts together everything that I've been and done so mm -hmm. far. My sociology background, my acting, my theater background, my love for cinema, and also social um, consciousness of how we can make a change with these stories. So I think that's why, I mean, this is a delight to be here for all the reasons, you know, um, that we all know, but I've been tracking your film festival for the for the last 10 years. No, so it's, it's even it's... more exciting to me, for me to be here. So we expect more sociologically oriented films in the future. Yeah, well, this has been such a great experience. I think I'll definitely be working more with people like, um, you know, Alice and the Adventure Syndicate. Yeah, it's very important because it's an amazing tool, the moving image. And now with everyone with a good iPhone, what is holding you back? Nothing. You don't need expensive equipment and lights and sounds and huge uh, budgets and so on. You have a story. There is an issue you want to deal with. Go out there and tell it in images and we'll be happy to be the platform for it. <laughs> Sorry to butt in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, Nora, for saying this. This is a really very important. And and sometimes we take uh, stories like around us for uh, maybe for uh, for granted, you know. Uh, but they would uh, send a lot of big messages for change, uh, and that's what you did, Karina. So maybe building on this, if you can tell us, as you know, now we are starting the question of status of women, uh, and there's a lot of advocacy around it, and the film festival is taking place now in New York. So maybe um, if we can start with you, Karina, and then Dr. Kat, to tell us, like, how do you think uh, these short movies can contribute to the conversation um, around women's rights, and also, uh, what role do you see your film playing in advancing the dialogue or the advocacy efforts related to women's rights, especially at this time? 
Oh, that's a big question. Um, <laughs> well, I, so firstly, I think that um, language and like how we talk about people with disabilities, especially women with disabilities, plays a major role. Um, there are huge stereotypes around disability in media. Um, like, for instance, there is always like the disabled person is an inspiration to non-disabled people just for existing, like not for doing anything in particular. Um, and how we talk about people with disabilities actually can change representation either for the better or for the worse. Um, and unfortunately, media is still pretty bad in terms of representation. So I think like by doing movies, especially if people with disabilities tell stories about disability, hopefully improves representation at some point. At least that's what we are trying. Um, and what was the second part of your question again? <laughs> I kind of forgot. <laughs> no, this is <laughs> the second, second part. How do you think it will uh, play like a crucial or important role in advocacy? Like how will it be used? Yeah, you've mentioned the language, which is very important. And uh, I can understand from you that using it kind of alternative from the media or the media what is doing. But yeah. how do you think, yeah, it can reach more audience or uh, play a major role in advocacy? Well, I think that's basically mostly Rita's role in this because Rita is such a interesting, engaging person. And I mean, like this film has been played at like I think 20 film festivals now even though it's like a really no budget very simple film made by a journalist not by a filmmaker and it's it's just because like everybody is telling me this and I can read this here in the chat as well it's just like Rita is awesome Rita is beautiful we love Rita so <laughs> it's like it's really only because Rita is at the center of this film is that people actually get interested in this topic it's not because I want them to talk about accessibility. It's because there is a person that does a great job at just like engaging people. And well, I hope I can make more films like that. And that's how I try to contribute to the conversation. Thank you so much. You're absolutely doing so. Uh, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, Dr. Kat, maybe you can tell us more about how you think so. Yeah, thank you. I think that's a really good question. That was a lovely response, Karina. Um, I think we, what we're trying to do with our project um, is just to draw attention to, you know, extraordinary uh, women inventors of the past. You know, they've been inventing all kinds of things on across all kinds of um, uh, topics. We just happen to focus on clothing, um, but there is really deep, remarkable, exciting, you know, dramatic stories that are in that. So we tell quite a lot of those, trace the lives of these amazing inventors. But also I think the clothing itself, you know, it challenges binaries. You know, you saw how con they're convertible, they're reversible, they're multiple, they're invisible. I think the challenge is the idea that clothing doesn't have to just be one thing on one person. You know, these garments enabled the wearers to be multiple, to, you know, to have choices, to have options, to do things or not do things, depending on what they were, you know, had the, had the freedom to capacity or just the choice to do things. So I think at the moment, you know, we do have, many of us have choices choices in sportswear but also we don't kind of when you look at it a lot of it is still quite fitting it's still quite tight it's still kind of it fits particular bodies more than it fits other bodies right and some people can be made to feel quite um quite uh self-conscious in some of those kind of garments so there is something about you know the multiplicity and the creativity that I think it could spark you know imaginations as to what else sportswear could look like if it's just about moving joyous adventurous bodies having fun you know rather than a particular type that we kind of look on social media and think is that us or isn't that us so I think just expanding that idea becoming kind of more maybe curious about what else asking different questions is what we're trying to do with this kind of work and so far we seem to be getting that kind of feedback from people thank you so much and yes hopefully uh things will change with time so sorry uh Nora, you wanted to add anything yeah, no, actually, I wanted to take this opportunity. And if there are people, because I put it again in the chat, if there are people who are wondering, wow, I missed it, how can I catch these movies or maybe see the others and so on, I put the website again. And as a courtesy for our partnership with NGO CSW, 
we are offering a special code which will allow 15% off on all the tickets for all the films of the festival. And I just put it in the chat. So if you use that, it's an SRFF24 CSW68. That's the code. And you get an additional 15% off. And again, to remind everyone that as of the 15, uh, as of the 19th, all the films that we are screening will be available with the exception of two or three on our online platform, which is also accessible through our website. So that's basically my little uh, <laughs> commercial in between. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much for sharing. And as Nora mentioned, it's in the chat. I really would like to go more into the discussion, but given the time and we want to open it also for the participants, I just have one final question. Uh, um, if you have any future projects planned that continue to explore the themes of uh, women's rights, intersectionality, and all the social uh, change that you're tackling. So uh, if so, if you would like to share them, um, either like now talking about them or in the chat. So tell us if you have any future um, future plans. Um, oh, sorry, Karina, do you want to go? Oh, okay, just uh, yeah, very briefly, lots of things are up on our website. Um, we've got two books coming out uh, very shortly that go into these stories in much more detail. One of them is a book about these historic inventors, and the other one we got to, we had the privilege and joy of speaking to 50 contemporary um, inventors who are just hacking and doing really imaginative things with clothing to make the world kind of more inclusive and expansive and non binary and just to free, you know these different ideas and different bodies to do different things so those two books are coming out which is very exciting um, and just we're going to be dropping lots of patterns from our patent study um, because we've had lots of beautiful success from this in the past where people have taken these and remade historic costumes or just hacked at some of these really interesting ideas into their contemporary clothing and we love seeing what people just do with some of these timeless ideas so that's happening and also I'll, I'll put a, a link to the adventure syndicate and more diversity my collaborators on this film and of course Alice who was the um the director on this the work they're continuing to do is incredibly inspiring so I'll just put links up there to their work too I, I'd Thank like you. to have the skirt pattern <laughs> <laughs> I'm not too much of a skirt wearer I'm constantly in pants but sometimes especially when traveling it could be very very useful to have something specially made out of uh, some uh, fabric that is crease free or doesn't uh, you know need ironing or something and then you can use it as a cape, as a thing, as a <laughs> as a wrap, as all sorts of things, you know. So I'd love to have that. Lots of people love the capes. I think we should bring back the cape. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, and use it as message. You can also put messages in the back and say, hey, <laughs> women power or whatever, or ceasefire. Hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Ceasefire now with big letters now right sorry <laughs> okay uh karina your next thing you know <laughs> well i have a uh, lot of projects um in parallel all the time uh, because i'm a freelance journalist so i do everything and nothing i guess um but my work mostly focuses around disability representation. So um, I have a, another short film in the works that focuses more on intersectionality, um, specifically between disability and uh, sexual identity. Um, and then I'm also planning a rather bigger feature length film um, on media representation, um, which highlights uh, disabled media creators. And I just published a book together with uh, my co-author. It's called Stopped Ableismus, which kind of translates to stop ableism, um, but it's in German. So I'm not sure how much use this is to you guys. Um, yeah, and uh, all these films kind of benefit uh, chronic pain partners or EDS awareness. Um, I can put a link into uh, the chat if you'd like. Um, that's a nonprofit that I'm supporting in the US. 
Thank you so much. It has been an honor talking to you and listening to you. And yes, please do share any links that you have in the chat. And I hope that maybe in the upcoming years, uh, Nora, to feature more of these movies in, in our, the upcoming festivals. Uh, so that's amazing. Thank you so much. We are, would like to open it to the participants. Uh, if you would like to ask any questions uh, to our amazing panelists or any comments, please feel free. You can either type the question in the chat, I'm happy to read it, or feel free, free to raise your hand and or unmute yourself. Yeah. Excuse there me. was a raised hand at some point, uh, I noticed, yeah. but I don't know what happened to it. No, there, it's, it's here. Yeah, I can hear. I... Yes, I, yes, I, I please go ahead. I thank you. I'm Lida Verstegen from the Netherlands. And I saw today in the I, I thank you very much for those most inspiring movies. They're wonderful. Uh, but today I I saw that there was a new mu museum in Berlin where they show about things about the history of menstruation where and <laughs> I it's it's very strange, but it's it's fun. It looks like fun, and we, the International Alliance of Women, have a project called Water and Pads, where in that we use in uh, schools in Africa and in Asia. There, there are. Um, organizations like ours who do that and the girls and even the boys and the teachers are very very happy about it so i think menstruation sh should be because it touches it should, it's very inclusive it touches all, all of us um, is a, is a subject that you may try on it's, um, it's it, yeah yeah, uh, that absolutely. I, I totally agree with you. Um, I'd love it if you could write down in the chat the name of that museum again. I'd love to have a look at that. One part of the project is actually about menstruation inventions that women have um, have uh, uh, invented for the last uh, mm -hmm. 150 to 200 years um, that yeah. we've been studying as well. So I would love, oh, yeah. to, love to learn more. Yes, I will. Thank you. Where is it? Yeah. Yes, thank you so much for sharing. And it's definitely something that we need to even dig more. And there's a lot of local initiatives actually in the work that we do and in our projects uh, to um, uh, uh, whether in Lebanon or in different countries. So it would be great if you can share uh, the details and we, we can connect maybe at some point. Uh, thank you. Uh, I can see in the chat, yes, Stella, that's definitely very interesting to know that such reversible outfits can be made to enable women to do multitasks. Yes, absolutely. And to break the barriers. Uh, any questions anyone would like to share uh, before we wrap up? Okay. Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. I'm so happy to see our beautiful filmmaker. They make so beautiful uh, movie for us. And also the background. That kind of, uh, let me feel like a very old generation. And then I like to know, it's which years in this background in the film. And also I like to know that uh, in that and the generation, the boy, the man, how they wear. And then I really surprised. Uh, and uh, nowadays we really take a like a granted. We think we want to wear sports, wear, run in New York City, go everywhere. And then so happy and free. We didn't know how they come to this step nowadays. Yeah, and the first I'd like to know that background, that, that the generation's background, which years around, and uh, how the boy, how they, how they wear. 
and how they, we can compare that the, the boy and the girl, how big difference in that time and how different in this time. Now we always say, oh, lady first, oh, this and that, but uh, how struggling come to this step? And we are so free to enjoy the life like that. And I like to know, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you very much for your comments um, and support of this, of, of the films. It's really wonderful. Um, we have been focusing particularly on girls and women's sportswear because we actually thought that they had so many bigger problems to face um, and still do. And so therefore had to be extraordinarily um, inventive. So that's uh, this is only a small portion of even some of our research and our research is only a small portion of just the incredible things that they've done over time. But in terms of kind of what boys and men were wearing, um, that's a whole other kind of research area that people have, have done. But I would um, almost argue that they're, I mean, of course I would, but just that I think women's, um, women's inventive because of the, the sheer problems that to face was kind of bigger and I think more inventive. So they had to kind of like keep to do, have their clothes do multiple things. Whereas lots of menswear tends to be what is written on the label pretty much because they had so much more choice or their clothes just fitted better with things. Whereas women's clothes just didn't. So they had to work around problems. So that's why I've been focusing on things. But still there is lots of stuff, lots of history to be, to be told about menswear, but lots of people tend to know that more than the hidden stuff, I think. But thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, anyone would like to add any questions? Uh, or last minute comments. <laughs> or last minute comments. <laughs> Okay. Usually I take silence as Can a... you hear me? <laughs> yes. Yeah, one person wants to say something. Yeah. yeah, I just wanted to say Rita was very inspiring. I, I missed the part about how she became disabled, but to use Legos to build ramps, it just it just opened up a whole nother thought for those of us who live in a urban setting and have spaces that don't allow for accessibility, how we can be innovative to bring that to people who are not only disabled, but people who are up there in age. And, um, you know, stairs is a problem. So thank you. Um, maybe I can answer that uh, for Rita because it's part of the film. Um, Rita was disabled in a car accident. And yeah, so um, that caused a broken bone in her lumbar spine um, and then uh, paralyzes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for your answer. And thank her, please, for the innovation because it, it gives me an idea of the challenge of bringing accessibility to my own space. Thank Actually, you. I can send you a article that I've written about Rita in Ability Magazine, which was also like the very first interview I've done with her because that's in English. Um, and I think they also have her like ramp building plan if you want to ask them. Oh uh, yeah, that would be helpful. If, <laughs> if you could put that in the chat, I would receive that with gladness. Yep, yeah. I will do so. <laughs> Thanks. But you see, this is also all about these exchanges that are happening and people knowing about each other, especially women, knowing what the other woman is doing and so on, what the right hand is doing and the left hand, and then more collaborations come uh, along. Do I have a moment to say another, make another comment? Um, I think we're running out of time, but I just want to read a message that Michael Clays, who is a socially relevant film festival team member and a um, board member, a um, very hardworking member of our team who has just written here. He just says, I want to thank NGO CSW for the continuing partnership with uh, and support for the festival. And thanks to the filmmakers for their creative and inspiring work. 
And of course, I cannot but second that. Uh, I can but second that and say again, thank you so much. Um, thank you, Mufida. Thank you, NGO CSW co-chairs and former chair Huri and our wonderful friends all over the world. We had a huge turnout and I'm sure people were coming in and out because there's so much going on with the forum. And we are really, really happy to share these films and many more with you. So I'm not closing. I'm just saying my remarks. So it's up to you, Mufida, to... Uh... No, thank you so much, Nora. It's always a pleasure to collaborate with you and the film festival. And thank you for portraying all these amazing uh, movies. Uh, like, uh, I'm definitely so interested in watching like all of them. Uh, Karina and Dr. Kat and... Uh, and Rita, special thanks to you all. And Is this Manny Lasset? Doing. Sorry? Somebody okay. said something. I think by mistake, yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, thank you everyone for attending. And uh, yeah, we, we hope to see more of you. <laughs> and maybe we should tell them that the recording would be available for those yes. who are not able to catch it. Thank you for reminding me. Uh, definitely, we will have the recording available. Um, and um, I think everyone shared the link in the chat. So please make sure to look into uh, the profiles, the links before you drop off and also the promo code that Nora shared if you want to attend the festival. So recording will be available and all the, these movies will also be available as of March 19, Nora, right? That's right. Online March 19th. Online March 18th, 19th. 15th to the 18th in person in New York. Yes. Thank you, okay. Everyone. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you, everyone.